Hey guys, how have you been? I hope you're having a great year so far with many games and more importantly, all the time in the world to play them. I've been enjoying a few challenging MMOs myself, but sometimes I also like a little hands-off experience, so to speak. That's why I didn't think twice when I was invited to try the recently released League of Pantheons, a role-playing game where you set out on adventure with a party of fierce heroes. This game is available globally for a few days on Android and iOS, and you can find the download link in the video description. I'll give you the good news right away. If you're going to play this game, we have a list of coupon codes in the video description for you to redeem, so don't forget to check it out as well. But before you get to it, let's see what League of Pantheons is all about. I should open a parenthesis here, because there's something you should know right off the bat. The more attentive and knowledgeable players among you will surely say that there's something familiar about this game, and you're not wrong. League of Pantheons is an updated and improved version of a game that's come before in two guises, Tales of Radiance and Ellera's Raid. However, this is the official release for North America and Europe, so it's the real deal and one that you should go for if you like the genre. A quick word about the publisher of League of Pantheons, Neocraft. In case you haven't heard about them, they're the guys and gals behind a couple of very popular MMORPGs for mobile devices. Both Tales of Wind and Guardians of Claudia have achieved some considerable worldwide acclaim, and I've enjoyed the heck out of both. League of Pantheons isn't an MMORPG, though. It could be described as an idle RPG where you assemble a team of heroes and go on about increasingly tough battles. You get to recruit heroes from a melting pot of mythologies including Greek, Norse, Japanese, Chinese, Egyptian, and Hebrew. So you can expect a bunch of familiar faces. Not that you've known them in person or something, it's just that pretty much everyone knows a thing or two about Odin, Zeus, Poseidon, Anubis, and... Catherine? Um, who? I guess this girl's some kind of almighty being that I'm not aware of? The character artwork is pretty good, extremely diverse due to the distinct roots of each hero. However, there's a weird glitch in the hero showcase where you upgrade and equip each one, where the animation in some of them is smooth as butter, while it's sluggish for others. Probably a minor bug that'll be fixed in an upcoming update? During combat, you get all the kind of crazy skills with cool visual effects and such. In that area, there's nothing to complain about. Your main method of recruiting new heroes is through summoning. You go to the city and into the summon area where a few different banners await you. Apart from a free daily drawing, you can use gems to summon heroes in a 10 pull. Something that's always more appealing than a single pull. From what I could gather, there are 150 heroes so far, a more than reasonable number for any hero collector RPG. The Seer Summon is another place where you can get heroes and hero shards. It's like a crystal ball witch, and a pretty one at that, where you use another type of in-game currency, Seer Stones, to flip one of four cards, choosing your preferred element, wind, water, fire, or light, dark. Beyond the well-known hero names sit some very intricate personalities. It's a staple of the RPG genre to have a selection of elements tied to each hero, creating an intricate system where you must adapt its strengths and weaknesses to whatever opposing team you come across. You have heroes of water, fire, wind, light, and dark elementals, and while it's true that you must carefully consider your lineup for the main campaign during the later levels, this is of utmost importance when you face other players in PvP battles. You know, there's always someone that's better at this than you. At least that's what my experience is always telling me, usually in very humiliating ways. You know, gaming can be fun, but player versus player can be quite unforgiving, right? Leveling up and advancing heroes is essential, as well as equipping gear of different tiers. You can pay a visit to the smithy in the main city and he'll gladly upgrade your weapons and armor, if you have the necessary materials, that is. By consuming equipment of lower tiers, you can create higher tier gear so it's a matter of collecting tons of low-level pieces to gradually turn them into more powerful gear. In League of Pantheons, you collect rewards left and right, be it daily events, achievements, campaign milestones, or just the regular collection of in-game currency and resources that your heroes get as they follow their paths. There's always something waiting for you in your treasure chest. You can quickly get some extra loot by using the Blitz feature, which is available as a standard mechanic, but also in some trials such as daily dungeons and endless brawl modes, among others. 
This is a way for you to skip combat and go straight to the good stuff. But usually only the first time is free. These subsequent claims require a certain number of gems. As for the gameplay, an idle RPG it may be. But when you're actively playing, instead of waiting for the endless rewards to pile up, League of Pantheons requires you to do a lot of tapping, and gladly so. In the main campaign, you have your party of five heroes happily strolling along the hundreds of stages that make up the various world regions. But at the beginning, you're forced into one single formation option. As you level up, you unlock more formations every 10 levels, right up to level 60, opening new options for your team. You can put your tankish unit at the front so that your mages and support heroes are protected from harm, for example. But in the end, it's up to your hero roster and how you judge the opposing team, including the buffs that take place during the battle. The turn-based combat is fast, especially during the early stages, and if you manage to score a super rare hero in little time, just as I did, and more than one time, however, the tough part is upgrading it to legendary, something that requires extra hero shards and the like, a task for the long run. I'm pretty sure that many devoted League of Pantheons players already managed to do so, but I haven't played for that long, so I'm yet on that venture. But as I was saying, as you level up and move through regions, the battles become more challenging, and even when you speed it up, they'll last longer as your enemies prove more resilient. All in all, exactly what one would expect, because being a hero is never easy. Still, I wish I had a bit more control over the way that the battles turn out. The only thing I wanted was to be able to select a specific enemy for my heroes to focus their attacks on. I believe there's no such option, but do correct me if I'm wrong. When the going gets tough, the tough get turned into pulp. There are many events to earn the extra resources needed to strengthen your heroes, not to mention the gems to summon brand new and powerful warriors. The aptly named Babel is the endless tower mode of League of Pantheons, where you'll find many foes and climb floors until you reach the top of the tower. After what seemed like countless seconds of scrolling up, I finally managed to confirm that the Babel has 600 floors so you can guess how long it's going to take to reach the final boss. Choosing the trial section opens four more modes with varied rewards. The daily dungeon should be one of your go-to places to earn hero shards, gold, experience, and more. As the name implies, it's recommended to go there every day. Next, we have the endless brawl, where your party faces successive waves of enemies of increasing difficulty, and when one of your heroes dies, the others must keep pushing until they all die. There are two more modes, Plane Expedition and Astral Throne, with the latter rewarding you with titles that aren't just cool, they come with buffs to HP and attack stats. Any idle RPG such as League of Pantheons needed a guild feature, and indeed we do have one. This is the place where you and your teammates cooperate on guild raids, facing tough bosses, but also enter in guild dungeons to take down what may seem like smaller and less aggressive bosses but they're very challenging, and there are a hundred chapters of combat waiting for you. The rest of the features are as you would expect, including a shop where you can purchase hero shards with guild coins, send red packets to guild members, and ultimately engage in guild war if you feel that you have the motive and the power to do so. PvP is another aspect of League of Pantheons that'll get major attention, or dare I say, the part where all the top players are going to focus the most. Head into the city where the arena is, where all kinds of players await your confrontation. You can pick a defensive lineup for when someone decides to challenge you, but when it's time to attack, you can choose among the few players available by comparing their combat power with yours. If you're not pleased with the potential rivals, you can refresh the list and find a more suitable opponent. Various rewards await you at different stages, including summon scrolls. That's League of Pantheons in a nutshell. It's a nice idle RPG that has all the elements to please a crowd, but you must be a fan of the genre to absolutely appreciate and enjoy what it has to offer. It's tightly made and features every single mechanic that we've come to expect from a hero collector game. So if you're looking for something like this, or you liked what you've seen of Tales of Radiance and Elora's Raid, then definitely give it a shot. The download link is in the video description along with the League of Pantheons gift codes. Have fun! and good luck with your summons.